So today I'll be repairing stick drift on the DualSense wireless controller. First thing I'm gonna do is separate the controller. I'll lift it up on this black piece. here at the bottom. There are also two screws hiding beneath the L1 and R1 buttons. So we can pop those off. Okay, so we've got all of our screws out and now we can separate the two halves of our controller. Nice. So just like anything else, the first thing you wanna do always is separate the battery. This silver screw is holding on this black panel. I wanna unplug this microphone cable here. And the microphone will come out with the black panel. Got a few more connectors here. Here, here, and here. And the last thing you wanna do before you take the board out is unsolder these four uh, pads with the black and red cables. I like to grab a soldering iron and what I do is I lift up with tweezers and that usually gets off these red and black connector cables. Now I can remove my board. Throw my, throw my, I'm gonna throw this half of the connector to the side really quickly. I also wanna put this to the side as well, this bigger microphone here. And I'm gonna take off my joystick pads as well, finger pads. Now, here's what I'm left with. I've got a motherboard. I've got two analog joysticks on here. And one of these joysticks is moving without me telling it to, which I don't like. So what I'm gonna do is replace it. I forgot to show you my controller behavior before I took it apart. And I forgot to show you why I wanna replace joysticks in the first place. So right now I'm on Gamepad Tester. I just found this website on, um, I found it on ChatGPT a, a second ago and it connects to my controller. And as you can see, I'm not moving it right now and it's just doing all of that on its own. This left uh, analog joystick, it's supposed to stay right here in the center, but it likes to jump to the left from time to time. So that's what you call 
That's what you call joystick drift. I want to show you guys one that I just replaced. Or I just repaired. And here's what it's supposed to look like. Yes, it's wobbling a little bit, but you don't get it doesn't go all the way over here. So let's repair this bad one really quickly. So if I remember correctly, it was my left stick, which is my, they call it XY. So I just got to remember that it is on the left side when I'm looking at the joysticks. So if I'm looking at the joysticks, it's my left. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to add some some flux. And I'm not scared to add a lot. It's going to be a messy repair. Now next I'm going to grab my soldering iron and I'm going to add some low melt solder on there. I got this pound of Kester solder from, I think, Amazon. And I want to add my low melt solder to the factory solder that comes on the DualSense wireless controller because this has a lower melting point and it should make it easier to remove it. I'm going to add a little bit more. All right, next, I'm going to grab some solder wick. And I want to cut a bunch of pieces of solder wick because this is what I'm gonna be using to get to remove the joystick. That should be enough. And it should be really simple. What I'm going to do is just put the solder wick on the board. Add more flux. And I want to clean up these through hole connectors as much as I can. All right, so here's a look at it underneath the microscope. What we're going for is we want every hole to be clear of solder. You don't want to see any solder inside any of those holes because that lets me know that it's ready for removal. If there's solder there, it'll be difficult to pull out. And now that we've got all of the solder out of the holes, at least on this side, it's a through hole connector, so there, there may be some solder on the opposite side where the controller joystick is, but everything so far on this side looks clear, which is a good a good thing to me, a good sign to me, and it lets me know that we're able to, it lets me know that we are ready to move forward. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab my heat station. I've got my Aero 99. I've got my heat on 390. And I want to blast this button just long enough for the solder to melt and for my old my old joystick to come out. Now, I don't have a bore holder. I think this would be a lot easier if I had a bore holder, so. I'm going to have to use my hands and risk burning myself. 
for this video. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm actually just gonna put it on the edge of the table and do it. Here we go. So I heated it up long enough and after a while, my PS5 joystick came out. Let's clean up a little bit. I wanna see if I can get some of this flux off. So here's my replacement part. It is a Hall Effect joystick. It uses a different mechanism to move your character around. I will say um, it is a lot easier to uh, install the joystick as opposed to taking one out. A, a lot easier. But before we do that, there are a few, there are a few through-hole connections who or, or connectors who still have uh, solder in them. So I want to add some flux and remove that solder. That way, we, that way we can just slide our Hall Effect joystick in without having to add any kind of heat. So we were able to clear out those three through-hole connections who still have solder in them. I guess I'll clean up again on this front side. And now I can place in my, my new joystick. All right, so now we can go ahead and put this new Hall Effect joystick back in, back in. We're in for the first time. All right, so it's a tight fit, but it went in there. And actually, I think it's a good thing that it's a tight fit. Because it really just makes it easier for me. All right, so next we wanna add flux again. A lot of flux. And We also want to add low melt solder again. On top of every through hole connector, because this is what's going to secure our new joystick in place. All right. So I'm going to get the flux off my soldering iron. I'm going to get the solder off my soldering iron. I'm going to add more flux. And I'm gonna to touch it again. Cause I wanna make sure I'm I wanna make sure that these are good connections that'll last a very long time. I don't want to get this back uh, at any point in the future. And that is how you install a Hall Effect joystick on a PlayStation 5 DualSense wireless controller. All right, so I had a chance to put this controller back together, and right now we are back in game. Gamepad tester, controller hardware tester, and I'm just not realizing they also have GPU testing, mic testing, MIDI tester. I don't even know what that is, but so if you look now, 
He's still offset, but we're not, we're no longer getting that jump to the left unless I click it, which is a good thing. So it's, it's no longer, we, we, we have successfully fixed stick drift with this Hall Effect controller because like I said, there are no jumps off to the left anymore, but it's still offset. So it hasn't been, a cent the center is not set correctly. And then also the rotation is also uh, wrong. So I just found out about this website called DualShock Calibration GUI or Graphical Use User Interface from a guy on YouTube. And I'm about to use this to calibrate my stick center, calibrate the stick range and anything else. So as you can see, it is off to the right the bottom right um, and then also you can see right here that it shows that okay I don't know what that is never mind but let's calibrate stick center so welcome to this welcome to the stick center calibration this tool guide you in recentering the analog sticks of your controller mine is no longer I guess it is analog even though it is a Hall effect joystick it consists uh, of four steps okay let's do it so please move both sticks to the top left corner and let them go. Move them to the top right corner, let them go. Bottom left corner, let them go. And bottom right corner, and let them go. So calibration completed successfully. Perfect. Now I want to calibrate the stick range. And that is the circular motion in which it travels so it just says go around in one circle I'm gonna go around in two and I should be done range calibration complete and now here I okay I want to save it I, I was having issues where I wasn't saving it and therefore when I power my controller off it stopped working so let's come back here as you can see it is now centered. I don't have any unwanted jumps or glitches. Uh, this doesn't count. And now if I go around in a circle again to test my, my range, instead of it being, uh, what was that, like 20 or something like that, it is now a lot lower and I'm actually going to do it again calibrate stick range Save changes. Okay. Sticks are still centered. Set the range. And it's around the same. Which is fine by me. Okay. So that is how you successfully repair. Uh, PlayStation 5 DualSense Wireless Controller Stick Drift. Hey, if you liked the video, if you learned something, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your day.